The pace of success in life is always, it's always determined by the pace of growth, which means anywhere, anything you want to reach, any like achievement or milestone you want to reach in your life, it will require you to grow. It, you can't skip that step. Growth is a must. What's going on, y'all? Joshua here. Uh, thank you for joining on another week. And uh, this week, we're going to be talking about growth, specifically the correlation between success and growth and how the pace of one really accelerates the pace of the other. And, and to be clear, the pace of your growth is what really accelerates the pace of the success that you desire. And this idea came about because I was having brunch earlier today and I met this server named Michael. Uh, Michael was Michael was actually great, man. I, he got a nice uh, tip because this, this gentleman was was pretty impressive. Uh, but he saw me kind of working. I had my my um, tablet there, and I was working on some stuff. And he asked me, "Hey, man, what are you working on?" And we got to talking. And it turns out Michael wants to be an entrepreneur, which is you know for our generation and a lot of uh, those who are even younger. That's kind of the that's the new doctrine now. People want to kind of own their own time, have autonomy, and be able to really, that's the, the success mark for a lot, of, a lot of people. And so I got to talking to him and I asked him, you know, Michael, you know, what are you planning to do? Because he asked me about what do I do? I told him about the book and all this stuff and he was really very intrigued. And so I asked him, man, why do you want to run your own business? He wants to do some e-commerce stuff. And he said, man, I'm just really looking for financial freedom. Like that, that's really what I want. And that's what a lot of people want, right? <laughs> financial freedom sounds like a, a good idea. But here's the thing. He said something after that that I think is so key. And that's what sparked the thought for today. He said, but I've realized, man, the growth or the success that I'm looking for in my business it has been growing at the growth of me as a person. My growth has dictated the growth of this e-commerce thing I'm doing. And isn't that the case for a lot of us? There are some of you watching this right now that you, you're like Michael. You work one, two, three jobs. You work really, really hard and you probably are really good at your, your job. You probably show up and give it your best but it is grind after grind after grind because you're working towards this, this idea or this image that you have for your life. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to accelerate that process, then you have to catch on to this principle that Michael mentioned that I think is so key for any aspiring entrepreneurs or anyone that wants to you know, do something great with their life. And that is understanding that the pace of success in your life is determined by the pace of growth. There is no way around it. There is no way around it. Now, there are some barriers. In fact, I think there are like three barriers that prevent people from ever reaching the other side of their growth. Like think of your growth as a, a mountain. Like it's not, the, the key is not to reach the top of the mountain. That's, that's potential. When you reach the top of the mountain, you can see what the potential is. The key is going up and then getting down to the other side. And there are many who there are barriers when, as they go up that mountain that stop them from making that journey. And I think one of the biggest barriers, I think there's three I, I would mention, but the first one that I think is one of the biggest barriers is this idea, this lie that you have a disadvantage. This lie that you somehow are behind the eight ball and there are other people who are more, I think the, <laughs> the buzzword the last few years is privileged. Can I just tell you that buying into that lie will slow down your pace of growth. Buying into this lie, and I know this is probably uh, rich coming, or not rich, but this is probably surprising coming from me because Sometimes you hear this come from uh, other black people, and I, I got to tell you, man, I don't get caught up in white privilege, blue privilege, you know, purple privilege. I understand that if, if I'm going to put in the work into me and grow my skill sets, my value, my mentality, it, there's nothing that can stop me. 
because I understand how I, how I am designed. And I'm here to tell you that you don't have a disadvantage. There's no one else that is more privileged than you. They may have been dealt a, a different deck of cards and their life may look a little different than, than yours. But that doesn't mean they're more privileged than you are. The privilege we have, you know what privilege is? Privilege is opportunity to grow. Privilege is every day you wake up and you have the eight to 12 hours ahead of you. That is a privilege because guess what? I probably sound like your parents right now, but I don't mean to. Guess what? Someone else didn't wake up with that reset on the clock. Someone else didn't get the renewed eight to 12 hours. You don't have a disadvantage. You have, you have nothing but advantages. The, the biggest one being your time. The biggest one being the oxygen in your lungs. The strength in your limbs. So I want to take this barrier and throw it off for your mountain today. If you feel like you have some disadvantage, snap out of that lie. Renounce that lie today. You do not have a disadvantage. I grew up in Immokalee, Florida. So a lot of y'all listening to me, if you've listened to me for a while, you know this. And I've told people over and over about where I'm from so that I want them to see the correlation of all of the disadvantages that I could have, you know, cling to. Oh, we are the second poorest city in, uh, one of the second poorest county, or not uh, counties, one of the second poorest cities in Florida, while in, at the same time in the same county as one of the third richest cities in Florida. That being Naples, Florida. So you guys, you can imagine there, there were a lot of disadvantages. A lot of opportunity to make some excuses or see self as victim. There are instances and experiences in my life where, where there are things that have happened. Trauma, you know, certain things I've, I've gotten to see that weren't pleasant. And the same thing is true in your life. There are certain experiences you've had that have been unfortunate. And provided you probably plenty of reason to quit. And if you look at it, you know, fast enough, it could seem like a disadvantage. But I must, I must encourage you to do not look at yourself or your situation as disadvantage. That will stop your pace of growth. Another thing that will stop your pace of growth is when you think you don't have enough resources. And some of you have heard me say this before, and I'll say it again. Everything you have is everything you need to grow. You may not like that one bedroom. I, I, I lived in a one bedroom, 700 square foot, which seems like luxury today when you look at the rental market here in Orlando. But I, I lived in this small room. I remember the, the, I graduated college and I couldn't even buy like a bowl of rice. We was that broke. There was no money to start up a business or to fund anything, I very much could have looked at it as not having enough resources. And there's a dream you've probably set on for years and years because you don't think you have the resources. You don't think you have a place to go or record your thoughts or record the, the content or value. You don't think you know someone. Can I just tell you that oftentimes within our circle, or we're either in the circle or we're one circle away from realizing that all the resources we need to grow, we already have. If your mind works, you are, you have a resource. You are very, you are very well resourced. If you woke up today with, with, uh, again, with oxygen in your lungs, you are very well resourced. You have exactly what you need to grow. But if you see yourself as lacking resources, a few weeks back we talked about you know, how you think is what it will be. If you see that principle, if you see yourself as lacking resources, then guess what? It, you'll never have enough. You'll never get started. You'll never go for it. And you will slow down your pace of growth. And I, I just got to say this, man, because I think when we when we think of resources, we look at them as like some 
what's that thing that you call it? The pool when you jump off of it and jump into the pool? What is that called? I can't even think of what that's called right now. I'm, I, my mind says trampoline. I said it's not a trampoline. It's a diving board. That's what it is. We often think that resources are the diving board into the life or success that we want. I used to think if I had a million dollars, my life would totally transform. But the truth is, you can give if you give a poor mentality a million dollars, that person is still going to be poor. And just you having more resources without the growth isn't going to do you any good. So let's get rid of that barrier. The next one. I didn't even stay on this that long. The next barrier to your pace of growth is overcoming the fact that growth is hard. Anybody can relate? Growth is hard. In fact, many of us, we get overwhelmed just thinking about growing. It's like me when I think about running or, or getting in shape. Just the idea of going to take a run. Uh, I, I, actually, I got a friend who called me to go play basketball this past Sunday. And I kid you not, man, I, at first I thought I couldn't go, but then I realized I could, you know, go out. So I, I confirmed. Yeah, I'll be there, man. And once I confirm something, once I give you my word, I'm there. The moment I said yes to that text message, I don't know how or why, but my groin, my, limb, my, my hamstrings started to ache. And I think they started to ache just at the mere thought of knowing I haven't played basketball in like two years. And my body was already kind of thinking, boy, this is going to, <laughs> this is going to hurt. And it, it did hurt. It that absolutely did hurt. I think I only lasted like a, an hour and a half when I used to be able to play ball for like six hours. It was good hurt though. I, I enjoyed it. But that's the way we think about growth. We start thinking about the journey and how long or how much work it'll take to get from the person that we are to the person we need to become. And we, it, we start to hurt. It starts to, our, our mind starts to say, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not sure I want to do that. Our resolve, our, our ability to persevere, our consistency starts to ache. But growth is hard. And you should be happy about that because that's the separator. The separator, the reason why everybody doesn't have the life that you are going to accomplish is because not everybody is willing to put in the hard day-to-day, process-by-process work. And if you're someone that you've been on this journey for a little bit of a while now, you've been thinking to yourself, man, why am I still not seeing the results? It's because sometimes the time horizon from getting to where you are the pace of growth from where you are to the success that you are looking to accomplish, sometimes it can take years. But you must take your eyes off of the outcome. You've heard me say this before. I'm going to say it to you again. Take your eyes off of the outcome and focus on the process. Focus on the day-to-day. Habit by habit. Behavior by behavior. Thought by thought. Action by action. And As your pace and discipline in that area begins to grow, so will your success. And by by that, I mean so will the, the evidence of your success. And in three minutes, I'm going to tell you three indicators of success. Because if you, if you get rid of these barriers, you'll start to see these three indicators and the two indicators, I'm sorry, two indicators of success you'll start to see. One indicator you'll begin to see is you will outgrow your mentality. Your, your current mentality, if you're just getting started, as you, as you grow, you'll look back to six months, a year from now, five years from now, and you, will, you won't even really recognize the way you think. I, I, I have a friend who's very talented at playing uh, the piano, playing the keys. His name is Michael. That's two Michaels in one, one day. I didn't realize that. His name is also Michael. He plays keys, and he's very, very talented. You can tell he has mastered just the art of playing the piano. And so we were in this service, and there was a speaker uh, talking, and he asked Michael to do something that I thought was hilarious. He asked him to play 
like play the play a song the wrong way or out of tune like on purpose <laughs> this is what he told him play this song but play it out of tune on purpose can i tell you that was one of the hardest things i've watched michael do you know he plays all these other songs and it's so effortless and i'm like man that is some that is some really impressive skills but this one was really difficult and all he had to do was play it the wrong way why? Why was that so difficult? Because he had mastered the skill to such a point that doing it the wrong way became the hard thing. You want to grow to such, a, you want to outgrow your poor mentality or current mentality to such an extent that it is hard. It is hard to think the old ways you used to think. Sometimes I go through this creating content. I try to think of, you know, where are the people at that I'm, that I'm trying to speak to and where, where was I and what did I feel? What did I experience? How did I get from that place to here? And sometimes it's hard to go back. It's hard to even reach there because I've outgrown that mentality so much. I used to walk around, and some of you have heard me say this as well. I used to walk around with a fitted cap on, a 2X, you know, uh, we call it a thick neck tee, a long tee or double neck, with 36 pair of jeans wearing a buck 50. I can't even go back to that mindset. I've outgrown it so much. And it's not just by chance. It's by intentionality. It's by realizing that the life I want does not, it, it does not correlate with this level of growth. So I got to get going. And that's an indicator. When you begin to look back and you can't even... You either look at it and you think, how, how in the world did I think like that? Or you look back and you try to remember some of the thoughts and you get it, they're not even there. You can't even think the wrong way. If you tried, it'd be hard. That's an indicator of growth. Another indicator of, of growth that I think is so important is feedback loops. And I meant to write this stuff down, but we're here now. Another indicator of growth is feedback loops. And what is a feedback loop? Simply, that means having people in your surrounding that will give you feedback. Whether it's like indirect, where they where you know they may recognize, man, look how far you've come. I have friends like that that'll tell me out of nowhere, they'll hit me up and say, Man, Josh, I'm just so proud of how much you've grown. And I'll look at them and say, What do you mean? What what have you noticed? What I'm not doing that so they can, you know massage my ego. I'm doing that because I need the feedback. I need to see what have you noticed that I've grown in? Because sometimes when you're in this and you're so focused on process, sometimes you don't even realize the progress. Being That's one of the, the challenges of being so keen or, or locked in on process is sometimes you can, you can miss out on noticing awareness of progress. And so these feedback loops help you to keep your eye and your thumb on the pulse of your progress, but it also, it gives you quicker returns of, of where you may be getting it wrong, where you may need some correction. Can I just tell you, if you don't have a mentor or a coach or someone in your life, you aren't accelerating your growth the way you could. If you wanna accelerate your growth, you need people in your circle that you either pay I actually, I won't say either, both. You need people in your circle that are fr friends, people you trust, mentors, and people, and even people you pay who have gotten to the place or, or built the life that you're looking to build. And these feedback loops are indicators of growth. Every person, some of you watch sports, it's amazing to me that every top athlete, top performer in their industry, they all have something in common. They have people who they pay to tell them and to give them feedback so that they can grow. Some call it a coach, some call it a mentor, some pay for classes and courses. Those are indicators of people who are growing. Now the key is you want to have clarity. Because it makes no sense to get a ladder and put it against the wrong house. I mean, it's great to have the ladder. It's great to have the growth. It's great to have the feedback. But if it's not getting you closer 
towards a, a vision, then it's worthless. So the key is developing that vision. All right. Those are very simple principles for anyone who is looking to grow. If you're like some of the people I mentioned in, the, in those stories, like Michael, or if you're, you're in a place right now where you're, you can clearly see where you want to be a year, two years, three years from now, then you need to know that the pace of that success, the pace of you, how fast, how quickly you get there, is determined by the pace of growth. So focus on your growth. All right. That's all for me this week. Hey, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button if you haven't done so already so that we can keep growing together, all right? I will see you all same place, same time next week, reminding you that success is your destiny. To the next one.